Hey guys, so as promised, today I'm bringing you my labor and delivery story. So to cut right to the chase, uh, my daughter was supposed to be born October 22nd, but she ended up being born nine days early on October 13th, Friday the 13th. And it was a 36 hour process. Yeah, 36 hours from like pre-labor to actual labor. So it started around, um, the Wednesday so I had her on the Friday so the Wednesday I'm guessing the 11th I uh, around 10 p.m. my mucus plug came out like the whole thing and I wasn't too worried about it because throughout my pregnancy my mucus plug was coming out slowly so I just thought okay this is just another step like the baby's just on track as normal but after the mucus plug came out literally like 10 minutes later I started to feel cramping and I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. Like, I don't remember ever feeling any type of cramping before. So I messaged my midwife and of course she's just like, don't worry about it. Just take, you know, some gravel and go to sleep. Like the baby's not coming anytime soon. And especially since it was my first, most people think that, oh, the baby comes at um, either on time or late. But I knew my body and I knew that my daughter was going to come early or on time. Even when people were telling me that, oh, she's going to come late. Like, that's how it is for all first-time moms. I'm just like, no, I feel like she was going to make an entrance. So, and she did. So, yeah, so I was feeling the cramping. The midwife said, take some gravel and go to sleep. Of course, I tried to do that, but you really can't sleep through those cramps. And it's like, at that point, it wasn't just like the mild cramps. It was like period cramps times like your worst period so I was just like okay whatever so I didn't have any gravel or anything I just tried to nap through the cramps and then the next morning I was fine like I was still a little crampy but not as bad as the night before so I thought that okay maybe it's just um so are you gonna hear some grunting in the background it's my daughter she's just doing her thing so where was that yeah so the next morning the cramping had went down so i didn't think anything of it but i was still trying to finish some last minute things because i actually wasn't all the way prepared for the baby because i thought i had a whole another week and a half so um i went and i bought some last minute things for my baby bag and i just went home and i tried to relax and that afternoon the cramps had started to get worse and at that point i started tracking them so my my contractions were about seven to eight minutes apart at that time and I, I messaged the midwife and I'm like hey just to let you know now, now I'm starting to have these contractions and they're seven to eight minutes apart and she's like okay well that's still no, nothing to worry about but just to let you know I'm off duty from 5 p.m. today to 5 p.m. tomorrow and I was just like what do you mean you're off duty like what if I have this baby but again she did not think that I was gonna have the baby so anyway, so I kept monitoring my contractions and uh, the rule of thumb that I was given by the midwife is that if they come every four minutes and they last one minute each contraction, then that's when you're supposed to call her and she checks and then you guys head to the hospital. So it's basically every four minutes you have a one minute contraction and three minute break in between. So anyways, I kept monitoring my contractions and the thing that like annoyed me was... Um, it's really hard for you to get rest when you're trying to monitor your contractions especially for me because I didn't live too close to the hospital that I was going to so like I didn't want to sleep through my contract like I thought I was gonna sleep through it and then it's gonna be too late for me to go to the hospital and then I'm gonna have to have this baby at home so I was just up trying to monitor the contractions I tried to take a one hour nap or two and then I'd be up monitoring the contractions again but even then like I could not nap through them like you really can't nap through the contractions because it's like really someone is like tightening your gut and it's just like honestly the worst pain ever so anyways still monitoring my contractions and then at like 10 p.m i saw that no 7 or 8 p.m i saw that my contractions were getting closer like n now they were five to six minutes then around 10 p.m they were like wavering around the five four minute but it still wasn't at that legit like one minute one whole minute every four minutes thing so but at still at 10 p.m i still messaged the midwife the backup midwife and i was like hey just to let you know my main midwife is off duty till tomorrow at 5 p.m but i think the baby's coming tonight so just to let you know my contractions are around four to five minutes apart and she's still like okay monitor them take some gravel and go to sleep and i'm like what 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 are these people thinking that contractions feel like i can't sleep through this and i can't monitor them while sleeping through like at this point like I had been in labor for uh, about like over 24 hours so yeah heading into the 30 hour mark I had been in labor so from 10 p.m. Wednesday now it's 10 p.m. on Thursday so 
it was now 24 hours and it was just I was in pain I was tired because I was tensing up with every contraction which they tell you to relax but it's really hard for you to relax your body like these contractions are hell so anyways so I had told her that and then of course she told me to take my nap and stuff which frustrated me so I just paced the house back and forth and then I used a um, vibrating massager to massage my back every time I had a contraction and that's pretty much what I did like I watched TV and I just paced around the house trying to help the contractions come faster because at this point I was just like yo I've been in labor for 24 hours like this baby needs to come out because I'm tired like I knew my body was tired and if I didn't have the baby anytime soon then I was gonna have to get an epidural which I did not want to do so anyways around um, three o'clock in the morning my water broke yeah, 3 o'clock. So, give me one sec. Yeah, so around 3 o'clock in the morning, my water finally broke and I was just like, okay, like this is the real deal. Like this baby is going to come any minute. So I messaged the midwife again and I'm like, hey, just to let you know, my water has broken. And at this point, I think she realized how serious it was. And she's just like, okay, keep monitoring your contractions. And once they get to that four minute complete mark, let me know and then we'll head to the hospital. Which still frustrated me because I was just like, my water broke which means that my labor could accelerate really quickly so I would like to get to the hospital as soon as possible but anyways so I literally 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 30 minutes later once my water broke my contractions became closer so they were between four three and four minutes apart like give or take like they were they weren't consistent so but I still messaged her and I was just like hey just to let you know they're three to four minutes apart and then she's just like okay meet me at the hospital and then we'll assess you so getting to the hospital, like, yo, know, I was in so much pain. I couldn't even sit in my seat. Like, I just needed to get to the hospital. I was just, I was so exhausted. Like, at this point, I was in labor for at least 20, 28 hours. Yeah, at least 28 hours. So we get to the hospital. We get checked in. Um, and then she takes me to a private room. And then she, she goes to check me. And she's just like, okay, let's see if we could get you admitted. Because you have to be at least four centimeters to be admitted. And, like, that made me sad. Like, I burst into tears because I was just like, I don't understand why I can't just be admitted. Like, regardless if I'm four centimeters, like, I'm tired. I don't want to go back and forth. Like, I don't want to go back home. I just want to stay at the hospital just in case, like, if I'm having the baby, I'm already here. So anyway, so she checks me and then at this point, like, I was just, like, so, like, I was just still bawling my eyes out. And she's just like, okay, well, we have some good news, like, you're five centimeters dilated. And then I was just like, oh my god, like, I was just, like, crying, <laughs> like, I didn't have anything else to say because, like, she was trying to make it seem like such a good thing, but I'm just like, I'm tired, like, what, what the hell, like, I just want to go home, like, well, I didn't want to go home, I just wanted everything to be done, like, I was expecting to be, like, seven or eight centimeters and she's like oh you're ready to push so i was just like damn it like i have like five more centimeters to go and like i'm i was just drained i didn't know how long this process was going to take but like i couldn't take it anymore so anyways we get checked in into the private room and then we you know get comfortable i go into the shower to take a hot shower to help with the contractions that helped for a while but then i got bored of it because like it's different from the tub because their tubs weren't working that week i don't know why i got so lucky but it was just a shower head. So I had the shower head pointed at my belly, but then the rest of my body was cold. So it was just like this weird, uncomfortable, comfortable thing. So I was just like, yeah, I'm not gonna do this anymore. And like, every time I wanted to like squirm, like I was on this hard rubber seat. So it was very uncomfortable. So I tried to walk the halls. That was a no-go. Like literally, I thought at one point I was gonna pass out because I walked the halls by myself. Like my hubby stayed in the room just because like I wanted to be alone at that point. And I remember halfway through, like, a contraction hit me and I literally, like, fell on my knees in the hallway and I was just like, yo, no, like, this is not, this is not what I want. So I went back to the room and then we just did some, like, uh, counter pressure stuff during the contractions. And bless my hubby, but, like, he was so clueless because at first it was the midwife doing it, but then she let him take over, kind of. And then, so, she let him take over and then, like, he was, like, pressing so lightly and I'm like what the hell are you doing and like at one point I got so angry and I started banging on the bed because the midwife had left and then I was like get me the midwife get me the midwife because like he was not doing it right and I didn't want to explain to him how to do it and it was just all types of mess so anyways we got to the point where I was just like just give me the gas and it's funny because I didn't want an epidural going in and we even talked about it me and her and I had like the safe word which is pineapples so whenever I said pineapples that meant I wanted the epidural but any time before then, I didn't want the epidural and I wanted to try to go as far as I could without it. 
So funny enough, in my head, I was saying epidural, but it never came out of my mouth. So anyways, uh, we just decided to go with the laughing gas, which, yo, I got, I took so much of that thing. Like literally all you heard the whole time I was in labor was just like, <gasps> like I did not take a break because it's one of those things like it doesn't take the pain away, but it makes you very lightheaded and sleepy and woozy and stuff. So it kind of like for a second you forget about it. You like fall asleep, then you wake up again. So like I was inhaling that thing like drugs, like it was just so bad. And it's to the point that it was funny because she told the other midwife that it wasn't able to make it. She's just like, yeah, like she loved that gas. And I did because it was the only thing that started to help after a while. And to be honest, it, even if it was only for like one or two minutes in between it gave me some time to like get some rest and take a little nap before actual labor so um i was just using the laughing gas the whole time and i think it was so bad to the point that my mom and my sister had come into the room i didn't even realize that they were there it's just like you like when you're in labor and you're not on drugs you you hear things going on around you but you're not focusing on anything else but the pain that you're in and to the point that like af after a while like i remember i was looking at the clock because i was in the room from like 4 30 and i was looking at the clock up until like six something and then after that i don't remember anything else all i remember is at one point like i started to come back into consciousness and then i realized my mom was in the room and then my hubby was in the room and um I was just like, my mom was talking to me, but I wasn't taking in anything she was saying, nor was I responding to her. And that's the thing, I'm like, why do people like to talk to you when you're in labor? Like, it's one thing if I was on drugs and I'm cool, but like, yo, there's no epidural, honey. Like, I'm in agony. I don't want to talk to you. Don't talk to me. Like, don't make noise in my ear unless it's to ask me if I want ice chips or water. Like, besides that, don't ask me any questions. And so... I remember at one point like that's when I like literally you do feel like you have to poop honest to goodness it's like one of the worst bowel movements you'll ever have in your life like that's how bad it felt and that's how I knew I was ready to push because like imagine you're trying to concentrate on the contraction and as well as trying to tighten your sphincter because you think that you have to poop yourself like it's it's the weirdest thing ever because I'm like I don't know what to concentrate on do I concentrate on not pushing or do I concentrate on like trying to get through the contractions like it was so crazy so I remember at one point at this point, I was delirious. Like, I was going into, like, 34, 35 hours of labor. And I remember, like, shaking the bed. I'm like, I need to push. I need to push. And then she's just like, no, no, no. Like, it's not time yet. Like, she, she didn't think I was as dilated as I was. So, so I was just like, no, I need to push. And then she's like, okay, well, we'll check you to see how dilated you are. She checks me, and I'm 9 centimeters. So I literally dilated a centimeter an hour after that. So by um, 9 a.m., I was like the whole nine centimeters and then we started pushing at 10 a.m. Boy, and then this this is a little bit of tidbit, but at, at a point, I actually did think I had to poop because like I had gone two days without doing it because I was in labor and I was just like, I was so scared to use the restroom. So I go in the bathroom to make sure that I had to or like I got rid of what I needed to before the labor. Tell me why everybody, including my mama, was trying to come into the bathroom and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, can I not have a second for myself? Like, they were like checking on me and I'm like, I'm good. Like, I'm like trying to slam the door in their faces because I'm like, as long as you don't hear a thump and me fall on the floor, don't come in here. Like, I'm trying to do something. But anyway, so I did what I had to do. It still didn't save me, y'all. I, I still, I still poop myself. And that was the one thing I was always worried about when I had kids. I, I was always paranoid that I would do it and I did it. And literally, you do not care. Because at that point when you're ready to push, you're just like, I'm just going to push whatever. And if a child comes with it, then so be it. But um, yeah, so then we got to that point where I had to start pushing. And it, it was harder than I thought because it was so confusing because you don't know where to push from. Like literally you don't know where to push from. So um, it took a while for her to come out. Like I started pushing at 10 and like lazy pushes because I was so tired. Like I was taking a lot of breaks in between my pushes just because like, I, I was just tired so I, I was started pushing at 10 but I actively started pushing at 1020 and she came out at 1051 1051 yes so it took me 31 minutes of pushing her before she actually came out and the other thing is that like the way she was laying down she had her arms crossed so it was harder for me to push her out because they had to get her shoulders out they had to wiggle her shoulders out as well and let me tell you, y'all, that ring of fire, 
the name sounds too cute to explain what it is like literally it was the most burning sensation like I you literally feel your vagina ripping open like someone like two people taking a side and they're just like ripping it open and I'm surprised I didn't tear because like the way it felt like everything was burning and like at, it was at one point it became the exorcist because like when when I was pushing her out they kept telling me to stop midway through and I'm like how are you gonna tell me to stop I need to push like but I, I listened actively because I'm like they know better than me but it's just like at certain points like literally for a good five minutes I had to like push stop push stop push push stop push like just because they wanted to get her out without me ripping and they were like massaging it with oil and lube and whatever else but like I was listening because I was just like I don't need to rip so tell me whatever you need me to do and I will do it and surprisingly it worked like I listened and I didn't rip at all so I was very happy about that and like honestly that last push when you feel like that gush and then you just see the baby like it's just it's, it's very surreal like you're, you're kind of like not knowing what to pay attention to because it's just like so many things happening at once but it it was the most beautiful thing I ever experienced and I'm surprised that like I wasn't bawling my eyes out like again I was tired and delirious at that point but when I saw my daughter and then sorry she's right here if you hear a lot of sucking and stuff and whining but when I saw her like my heart like it was really weird like I knew she was my daughter but I couldn't comprehend it like I was just like there's this new being and it's just like laying on me and it was just so crazy and just worth every bit of pain that I went through honestly like the birth was the the biggest experience in my life I will honestly say that was the biggest experience of my life giving birth to my daughter and on top of it like I felt more accomplished because I did it the way that I wanted to like yeah I didn't go exactly how I wanted it to because I did not want to be in labor for 36 hours but the fact that like I stuck to my guns about like not getting the epidural and I really pushed through it I was happy about that because so many people doubted it everyone like I remember when I was in labor like I actually had to turn my phone off and like not answer certain people because at one point they were like oh you should just get the epidural get the epidural get the I'm like how are you like supporting me like yeah I know you don't want to see me in pain but at the end of the day if you were like a good family or friend or whatever you know what my wishes are would you not try to push me to go through with my wishes and like not anyways so yeah I had to turn my phone off after a while because I was just like you're not being supportive at all so yeah that was my labor and delivery and then after that oh delivering the placenta for me was <sighs> yeah even that wasn't easy like my placenta wasn't coming out and the nurse kept getting worried because I guess you have like either 30 minutes or an hour to get it out and mine literally came out at the last minute and like yo after birth it doesn't end after you push your baby out you have to birth the placenta then they go and pressing and checking and looking all over to make sure that you're not bleeding internally from stuff which I actually did but um, I actually bled a little bit more than I was supposed to and they had to give me two shots of cord or some some something or some other like just because like I was bleeding too much and um, what else like I had a bit of tearing but it was like around the labia so they didn't think to stitch it up because it would heal itself because it's around the lip so it's nowhere near the perineum or whatever but like I remember after the birth like they were pressing down on my stomach to get everything they needed to get out and like I was in so much pain like I literally started crying again because I'm like I just birthed my daughter like I want a break and you guys are just like pressing around and doing all this stuff like knowing that like that crap is hurting and yeah that's one thing that I've never heard people talk about in a labor and delivery story is the aftermath after you give birth like there's so much more that goes on especially if you tear like god forbid I teared and then I had to get stitches like I think I would have been like nah B you better put some crazy glue on that and just like let it go because I'm not about to sit here and endure stitches for another freaking 30 minutes or whatever but yeah so that was it after the labor they let you get cleaned up then they feed you then they send you to another room and you get to spend the rest of your life with your little baby and yeah so my little princess Maya Quinn was born October the 13th at 10 51 p.m. and she was she was quite small she was seven pounds and two ounces and just so much hair oh my gosh like when she came out I was literally like this girl not only has hair on her head she has hair on her ears her shoulders her back her bum like everything she came out like 
like a little wolf like that's the only way I could explain it is a little wolf okay I'm sorry she got offended but yeah it, it's really cute and it, I know it's genetic because hubby is extremely hairy and one of my sisters actually came out looking just like her so I know it's hereditary and maybe it just means that she's just gonna have a lot of hair surprisingly I didn't have any heartburn to explain all this hair but again they say that's a myth so whatever anyways I'm blabbering uh, this is just my labor and delivery story if you guys have any questions or any comments feel free to leave them below and until next time i'll see you guys later bye